<laughs> Our first honoree of the evening is Nicholas Snow. Who Melina Oswald of ANU Magazine, America's AIDS Magazine, described as an openly gay, HIV positive, multi-talented artist who delivers his messages to a worldwide audience in as many ways as he has talents through his written word, his music. And since July 2012, through his popular blog talk radio show that I listen to, that as of December 2015 has surpassed over 1.9 million cumulative listeners. Wow. which Alina refers is the power to be strong. Nicholas's HIV testing slash safer sex awareness song that has been made available online, not only in its original English version, but translated into 20 different languages. The written word to which Alina refers is Nicholas's memoir, Life Positive, A Journey to the Center of My Heart. In her review of his book, Alina goes on to write, Snow zeroes in on the core message, message of life positive. Every single person has a tremendous amount of power if they simply choose to express it. We all as individuals are immensely powerful. We have one life to live and should make every moment count. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Snow is absolutely one everyday hero who makes every moment count. And we are all the lucky beneficiaries of his efforts. Please direct your attention to the silver screen. Okay, can we stop for just a second? A lot of people are afraid to be who they are and to express who they are, and that is the most powerful thing that we can contribute. I don't think that the greater community realizes to what extent Desert AIDS Project has impacted the health and well-being of our community. One of the things I strive to do is inspire people to be themselves and, and live their life each day because it doesn't last forever. For me, a hero is anybody that is willing to overcome their own fear, their own obstacles, to connect with other people, to find a way through, and to live each day triumphantly. Please help me give a warm welcome to everyday hero and my friend, Nicholas Snow. There's no one better than Barbara Keller to have presented this award to me. Thank you, Barbara. I love you as we all do. <laughs> and as you know from the still photos by John Pascal, I'm butch. <laughs> if I don't walk, talk, or move. <laughs> you might wonder why I didn't dress up for this, but I wanted to start out with this message. There is no shame about being HIV positive. More than ever before, I'm completely convinced that every action we take in each and every moment of our lives is profoundly connected to everyone, everywhere, yes. past, present, and future, now and forever. Yes. So quite literally, there is no one not to thank. I do want to thank Dave Morgan and Reaction Productions for sponsoring my award, and I offer my congratulations to my fellow honorees. I want to thank J.P. Allen, Daryl Tucci, Frank Goldston, and your entire production team for treating us like stars and making us all feel so special. I also acknowledge my close friends who are with me tonight, Helen M. Holden, who gave me a front row seat to writing a book, my good friend and editor, Kristen Johnson, and her lovely parents, Catherine and Jim, 
and my most consistent long-term best friend forever, Jeffrey Lang. Speaking of which, I thank my family of origin for giving me life, love, support, encouragement, and a yearning to be of service, even though we seem to have been living in different worlds more often than not. I am eternally grateful to them. And definitely an extension of my family as well. I thank everyone associated with Desert AIDS Project for not only giving me this award, but, but for literally keeping me alive and thriving on the planet. In the years after graduating from high school as a communications major at Arizona State University, recovering from a conservative political upbringing, and finding my way out of the closet, you never know what the laugh lines will be until you work with the teleprompter. <laughs> but this next line is no laughing matter. I heard about gay-related immune deficiency, GRID as they called it, soon to be known as AIDS. I was part of a community in which people I loved and cared for were dying, and they were hated and despised along the way. Later, a battle cry would emerge out of this horror which could not be more true. Silence does, in fact, equal death. And conversely, I could see that action very profoundly equals life. I realized my greatest weapon was my voice and my ability to yield it for the greater good in each and every moment of life. I was taught the value of every moment of life by the people I loved who were literally fighting for their own lives. It became my responsibility to honor their life force. Early in my life, I realized I had to fight for my life, for our lives, for, for our right to simply exist. I came out of the closet into the media in the mid-1980s, and I haven't stopped since. In spite of my life's history and personal knowledge, in a very human moment in 2007, I became HIV positive. In subsequent, in subsequent months, despite my decades of activism and intense work on personal growth and recovery, there were times I laid in bed at night wanting to die. I even looked up painless ways of committing suicide. It was the existence of Desert AIDS Project which helped me see a light at the end of a very dark tunnel. I kept choosing life and I started a journey to turn my own personal tragedy into a future of teachable moments. I kept a secret journal about how this would all transpire, written as I lived it, to keep me motivated and focused, knowing I would share it one day in the form of a blog or a book. <laughs> uh, this process made me accountable. This is why I describe my book as part 12-step program, fourth step inventory, part reality show on paper. Written as, written as I lived it, and now a memoir, I became one of the most visible openly HIV positive people in Asia before returning to Palm Springs to become a client of DAP and start rebuilding my life. It does take a village, and I'm so grateful to have all of you. But more importantly, we all have each other. How fortunate and blessed we are. In one of my first volunteer experiences with DAP, my job was to make sure only people with wristbands were allowed entry to the VIP after party. <laughs> well, along come two people I didn't know without wristbands, and the husband is telling me it's okay to let he and his wife into the party. I'm glad I, glad I did, because their names are Barbara and Jerry Keller. <laughs> Barbara and Jerry have become my friends and my champions. Lulu California Bistro is a longtime sponsor of my show. And Barbara, you are one of the most amazing people on the planet. And if there ever was a connector of humanity, it is you. Another powerful connector who could not be with us tonight but sends her love to all of the honorees is Carolyn Caldwell, CEO of Desert Regional Medical Center. I met Carolyn in person for the first time at this event last year. We've come to know and cherish each other, and tonight I'm thrilled to make an announcement. But before I do, I want to acknowledge someone on her team, Linda Stevens, who is here tonight. She was responsible for the rainbow flag that flew over Desert Regional on Pride Weekend, and that tower is lit up in red tonight. Thanks 
Patrick Carolyn and Linda and Richard Ramhoff at Desert Regional, I'm proud to announce that in 2016 they are a new advertiser on my podcast. Mm. I thank them for amplifying the great work of so many in this community. I want to offer my special thanks to Barry Dayton and your, uh, your team for your long support of my podcast, which as you heard, has just passed 1.9 million listens. That's actually uh, 1,904,519. <laughs> uh, the adventure continues. Life Positive, A Journey to the Center of My Heart is a true story written as I lived it, filled with dramatic twists and turns, darkness and light, tragedy and ultimately triumph. I sought to write a vision for my life into existence and I was profoundly surprised. Today, my personal mission statement is to honor and express my life force in a way that makes a difference. In doing so, I am fulfilling my life's purpose, which is quite simply connecting the circuitry of humanity. The final words of my HIV testing safer sex awareness anthem, The Power to Be Strong, proclaim. No matter who you are, no matter what you feel, this is your moment now, and your life is real. So get tested and live longer and be strong. Hear my song, life goes on. Get tested and live longer and be strong. <clears throat> with a final thank you, I will conclude with what I believe is one of the most important sentences in my entire book, and perhaps the most important message I will deliver in my life. Fight for the life and the world of your dreams until you have no life left in this world, for then you will have truly lived. Thank you.
stand there longer and be strong.